Because Figma is such an amazing tool, there are so many features in it, and sometimes you just need to get work done and you don't have time to learn all the new stuff. So you keep doing the same thing you've always done and you miss out on some of the really nice space-saving features and just nice quality of life improvements. And that's the case with something called the Instance Swap. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. I'm going to talk through this kind of start to finish. If you're interested more in how to use components as a whole and all these different properties and variants and all that kind of stuff, I've done a video explaining how to use the traditional variants, how to use Boolean, instant swap, and the uh, the content one as well. Text, I think is what it's called. So you can check that out on my channel and I'll leave a link in the description as well. We're going to take our time walking through this, but let me first of all just give you a very basic introduction as to why you might want to use the instance swap. So we're going to do a couple things here. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and click up here and I've got a plug in here for icons. It doesn't really matter what we're using here, but I'm just going to grab a bunch of these and set them out randomly in no particular order. Okay, so we've got a bunch of these. Let's go ahead and grab all of these. And in order to make these things instance swappable, each thing that you're making instance swappable, first of all, needs to be its own component. So with all those selected, I'm now going to come up here and do create multiple components. So they're not the same components. They're not variants of the same components. They're each their own component. The next thing I'm going to do is organize these because that will help us when we go to pick which ones we want to be the default instance swap properties. And then I'll show you again why you might want to do this. So I'm going to hit F and just click inside here and make it an auto layout. We'll call this like icons one or something like that. And then let's duplicate this and we'll call this icons two. All right, then I'm going to grab these and let's just drop these inside here and I'll grab these and drop these over here. Okay, so I've got two sets of icons and again, they're all their own components and then they're each organized in these frames. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and now create uh, two components that we're gonna use throughout this whole tutorial. So I'll hit F again, click, and let's call this something like badge uh, icon. And I do wanna make this a component just like this, and it needs to be an auto layout, so Shift and A, we'll do that. And then I'll hit F over here, we'll do the same thing, I'll call this button and Shift A once again to make it an auto layout, and then plus, all right, right there to make it a component. Now inside this one, we're going to have some text. So I'll hit T and then start typing. Let's do something like button text. And then I do want to drag in an icon uh, over here and then also here. So let's talk about why you might want to use the instance swap property. It basically cuts down on how many of these component variants you need to create. So traditionally, you would create one for each different icon set so that you could switch them in the sidebar in your actual designs. You don't have to do that anymore with the instance swap property. So Let's say I came over here and I drag this in, holding down the option key, just grabs an instance, and that's what I want. And now I've got this dropped right inside here. Let's say I do the same thing over here for this button text. I drag it in over here, change this auto layout to this way, put that in the middle. Let's also put this in the middle here. All right, great. So I've got now icons being used in both of these, but let's say I want to use one of these as well. Well, normally what you'd have to do is come in here at plus, and then you'd have to switch this one out. And now you've got two different variants. If I can hold down the option and drag it in there, you've got two different variants of this. But now if I want to continue to do this, now I'm going to have seven total. Now, to make matters worse, let's say I come in here and I say, hey, I want this to be a dark version. So now I've got a dark version. And if I want one for all of these icons. Now I've got 14 in this badge icon component set. So you can see how this starts to multiply your components pretty significantly. So let's uh, let's first of all go ahead and set this as like is dark or something like that. And then let's set this one here to false. And let's set this one here to true. This is just using the normal variants. If I drag this out with the option click, I can now toggle this back and forth. And if, again, if you're not familiar with that, check out that other video. All right, over here, we're just going to have the single variant. That's just fine. But now with this stuff set up, let's actually set up an instance swap. So the first thing you can do it kind of either from the parent or I usually like to do it from the actual component I'm working on. So let me grab this right here. And just to make sure they're the same for now, if I drag this out over this way and drag this in here. Now, since these are both the exact same icon, I can select this right here to select all the matching layers. So usually you want to use the same icon as kind of your base, and then you can build out from that to grab your different instance swap properties. So I'll click this and it selects both of these. Now, if I come over here, you're gonna see this icon right here. Now there are other ones like under layer, uh, don't click this, that's a Boolean property. It's this one right here that has the, air, the icon actually selected. So I'm gonna click this, create instance swap property. And we can name this whatever we want. So if I come over here, 
I would probably just name it icon, maybe icon type, something like that. And then you can change how it's viewed. But the important thing right here is now you can actually select preferred values. So if I click this, now it's gonna let me select which ones I want to show by default in this little drop down menu for the badge component. So right now, the one I'm using is already selected, obviously, but I can also select this one, and that's another preferred value. Now, the advantage of organizing them on frames like this is if you want to group icons, you can see I'm actually inside my icons to folder, essentially, and how I can select the ones inside of that. Now, for some reason, this badge icon is weirdly situated. I must have made that its own frame, but I could also come back out here and maybe select one from there and one from there. So they don't have to be organized on folders. It just makes it a little bit easier. So with that said, let's say I get rid of those two, come over here and click Create Property. Now, the advantage here is I can just drag this out with an option and then uh, drag it out. And now I've got my is dark back and forth, but I've also got this icon type instance swap property. And here are my preferred values right here. So I can just very quickly switch between these and how I've reduced my number of icons from 14 to down to two, which we'll do here in a second with this dark one. So you can see just back and forth, just like this. Now, of course, I can also come up to any component and jump up here and switch it out for the entire button. I'm not sure why I'd want to do that, but you can see how the preferred values don't lock you into those components. They just make it to where it's easy to switch between those. Okay, so with that being said, that's how to just do a basic instant swap and why you might want to do it. Now let's talk about a few different other variations. Uh, for instance, let's say I want a dark mode version. Now, the way I've done this, um, and this is my understanding of how to do this, is you'd come over here and you basically create variants for each of these between light and dark mode. So um, let's see, can I do all these at once? No, all right, I thought I would try. So let me do this and I'll be right back with you. All right, so I've got all those copied out. Now what I would do is come in here and add a different property. I would say like is dark and uh, let's grab this one right here. We'll say this one is true. And this one eventually will be, oops, so false like this. All right, so true, this would be dark, which means this needs to be light. So let me come down here and switch this out. Let's see right here. We'll go, uh, let's go something like gray four. Okay, so I've got a light and a dark version. I'm gonna do the same thing for all of them, but basically all I've done is create different variants so that if I were to drag this out, I can switch between them like that. So let me do the same thing on all these other ones and I'll be right back with you. All right, so I've done that for all the icons. Now I've got varieties of each of those light and dark varieties. Now, what I can do over here is I can just now select these from directly within this. So for instance, now I can just switch this to is light or is dark. Notice that this actually changes on both of these. So actually you wanna leave it alone here. So if I drag this out with an option, click over here, I can go dark or light for the entire thing. And then I can switch out the icons like I've already showed you. However, what I can do now is I can also click inside here. So if I come in here and click inside here, now here's where I can access the is light or is dark and just toggle back and forth between those two. So now I've got a, a light mode right here and a dark mode over there. So you actually change this in the kind of the starting component, and then you can use that all throughout your designs. Now, the same thing is true over here. Uh, just a kind of a note of how these things work differently. And then I'll give you a bonus for the text property. So I'm gonna grab the same thing here and right over here where it says badge icon, click this and I can add different varieties, things that I may want it to also auto select. So I'll add all those as kind of starting points. And then whenever I'm using this button, I can drag it out with option click and just swap it out between any of those ones that I currently have. Now, sometimes you may not want this to show at all. That's actually a different property type. And uh, so I'm gonna cheat and show you a couple of the other ones. So that's the layer one right here. So you can basically say whether or not it should show. And by default, it's true. So I'll hit uh, true. And if I come over here and drag this out, now I can on this, this kind of instance, decide not to show that icon. And notice that when I hide that, the instance swap also is hidden because it's the same exact component. Now, just one quick note, sometimes you'll see that, hey, this is like taller because it has an icon. And as soon as I get rid of the icon, it's not as tall anymore. Well, there's a couple of different ways to change that, but probably the best is just to come in here and set it as a fixed height if you always want it to be that height. And that way it doesn't matter whether or not the icon is shown, it always shows the same way. Now, one final thought here is you can actually also toggle this from the sidebar. This is the content property over here, the text property. And maybe I could just say like uh, button text or something like that. Now, if I do that and I drag this out with the option click, you can now change the badge right here. I can also change it this way and I can also change uh, stuff, all right, right here. So you can see how those three component properties are super easy to work with. Now, I wasn't supposed to show you all those today. It was just gonna be the instant swap, but I hope that was at least a help to get started with instant swap. Now, you might wanna stop the video right now real quickly and try to make a dark mode version of this that does the same thing and then play it again.
Okay, well, hopefully you had a good go of that. This is just one quick practice here. Let's go ahead and actually click plus here to create a new variant. And uh, let's grab all this right here. We'll say like uh, is dark. And right here, this one will be true or false. And then this one here will be true. All right, and we need to change the background here to something. Let's go something like that, I think. Okay, and then both of these here, we can actually switch up what color they're supposed to show as well on this. So I'll, I could come in here and grab this and we can go gray four, but you can see what I'm doing is actually swapping it right here. We're, we're like, what I really want is for it to swap uh, with the actual icon set over here. Now you might ask, why can't I do it like this? Well, the reason you can't is if you drag this out and then you swap this out right here, okay? So that badge icon to something else, you'll notice that it's not always consistent. So that was happened to be the same, this one happens to be the same, but sometimes what you'll see is that the little lines don't pr quite carry over properly. These must just all be uh, single vector shapes, but a lot of times if they contain multiple vector shapes, it's only one or two of the shapes that will actually retain that color. So that's one kind of got you with this, which is why I typically just have varieties over here, and maybe I'd switch out the color text, but here I would just probably leave this uh, whatever the default was. I'll just back up a bit. All right like that, and then I would just change this right here to be my gray four, and when I drop this out, then I can just jump inside this right here and change this to is dark or is not. So I hope that's a big help in understanding instant swap properties. I also got some bonus ones in there of the content property, which is that Boolean switch of whether something is visible and also the text property. So cheated a little bit, but hopefully you enjoyed that. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Happy coding.